Slayer, seriously, this was the first day that I, I, I purposely left my sunglasses because I felt that maybe I wouldn't have needed them. I was very wrong. Welcome back to Christina's Garage Gearhead and Training. I'm here for day four and the final day of SEMA. Let's see what we can squeeze in on the last day. I'm here with Playboy with Corleone Forged. I'm really new to all this stuff, especially with big rim vehicles, and I, I'm, I'm loving to, to learn more. Would you mind telling us about you and what you do? No problem. How's it going, y'all? I'm Playboy Jeezy. I'm a big rim racer. Also, I own a custom fab shop, Show & Go Customs, and founder of Chi-Town Show & Go Car Show. Um, I build big rim cars. I race big rim cars. I have one of the fastest big rim cars in the country. The car I got on display here today is a 1989 Chevrolet Caprice. It has 28 inch Corleone Forge with big floating caps. It has full frame off. Frame off, which for people that don't understand, frame off is when you separate the frame from the body. Um, redo everything, everything brand new. All new, all new bolts, all new suspension parts, all new everything. Essentially, it's a brand new car. Um, it has a custom framework, narrowed rear end. Uh, it has a quick performance custom fab 9 inch underneath it. It has full QA1 suspension front to back. Motor wise, it has a big black Chevy. I don't know if you're familiar with motor sizes, so there's like small black, big black, LS. A little bit. <laughs> it has a big black Chevy with a F1A94 Pro Charger, which is a brand of supercharger that I run on my cars. Um, it has a 4L80 transmission from High Performance Transes. It has a, a all custom all custom stainless exhaust, stain, custom made headers, done by a guy named KFab out of Miami. The car was touched by a lot of people. Um, all the interior, interior and the music was a compilation of a couple, couple shops. You know, I got a big name. I have a lot of people that follow me and I work with and deal with, so they'll make me make time for me in their schedule, and that worked awesome for me. The car was built in seven months, which is insane. That's fast. Anybody, <laughs> will tell, anybody will tell you. <laughs> I have I have like zero patience. I'm real bad with that, but like big rim stuff. I grew up around big rim. Well, I you know what I grew up with the big rim culture growing. I grew up around like these cars, box Chevys, G bodies. You know what I'm saying? Cars like that. So it was what I always wanted to do, and I always had nice cars, and we always started racing them. And they started getting faster, and it turned into a goal. I came up in the street. I got in some trouble. Went through some things. And um, I owned a towing company, and when the towing stuff started getting a little funky, I was working on cars on the side, and that's what made me open the shop. And honestly, opening the shop and the connections I've made in the shop have changed my life. I got people that I've met in this business that are now like family, started as friends. Um, but like, a lot of people with big rim stuff get worried about, oh, it's too expensive. Too expensive. There's, a, there's, a, there's a room for everybody. You don't have to do a frame off insane SEMA build. There's people that never get here in their life that build cars. I've been graced to be here with two different cars that I built um, and just got scheduled for another car for next year. So it's an awesome thing for me, but like find the rims you like, put them on there, ride the car, enjoy yourself. You want to build a motor? Hey, this day and age, you got YouTube. Look up YouTube, they'll teach you how to do anything. I wouldn't suggest it all the time, but they might teach you how to do everything. With the big rim tires, like you, you said, big rims and racing. In my mind, I don't think of having <laughs> big rims and then race with it. Like, how does well, that work logistically? A lot of people don't. And if you go check out my Instagram, my Instagram is playboy underscore G-E-E-Z-Y underscore 3800. It's playboy underscore GZ underscore 3800. And you will see what big rim racing is. Big rim racing was a sport that a lot of people laughed at and said, ah, they're not gonna get them cars to work, it's stupid, it's this, that, and the other. And now we get people that come and we drop jaws. You know what I'm saying? You see people, I, I literally go to racetracks. It's getting, it's getting a lot more seen now, so it's not as common. But in the first years we were doing it, I would go to a racetrack and I would get to the track and I'd be like, look at this stupid car with these big rims. <laughs> drop the car off the trailer, make a pass, and they'd be like, oh my God, oh my God, do you see? Oh my God, he just wheelied that car on them big ass rims. How do you, how do you, how do you, you'll never get that thing to hook up. You'll, so I've been proving people wrong my whole life. So it's, I get a kick out of it. I almost like when I go there and they're talking shit and I drop the car, make a killer pass and they're like, 
Or when they talk shit and they got a full out race car and I tell them, hey, could line that thing up. You but know you don't even have to say anything. You just show up and do. Yeah. Do you have to change the way that you build it versus because the rims are so it big? De it depends on what. It depends on what you got going on race wise. You know what I'm saying? It depends on what you got going on race wise. And then like there's different brands rims for different stuff. Corleone, I stand behind this company a hundred percent. We're we're like family over here. There's no Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? We we hang with the owner. You can call the shop and talk to the owner. We don't play no games. We just try to do everything. It's a super strong rim, awesome build and finish. <laughs> yeah, but we we just do what just doing what we're doing, you know, trying to make something different, not a cookie cutter wheel. You know, I, I, well, like race car wise, though, setting them up, I just it's a, it's a lot different suspension wise. There's different levels of these big rim race cars too. There's people that will big rim race a regular car like this, and that's perfectly acceptable, perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be the fastest thing in the world. I just want everybody to know they're accepted and just to get in where they fit in. That's really cool. And so I've seen big rim vehicles. What's the, is it just like a cultural thing? Like, is there a specific reason why, like, it's, just people like it? Like what? I, I think, well, it's a cultural thing, definitely. Okay. It's definitely urban, urban culture. You know what I'm saying? We start in the hood, we ride big rims. You know what I'm like, saying? It's just a thing. <laughs> yeah, we ride rims. It wasn't always big rims. It used to be like Kreger 30 spokes, Dayton's, Hammer's. It, it was all, it was smaller rims back then and just evolution, it got bigger and the wheels got bigger. There was a point where we were, where people were doing like crazy lifts and kind of, I'm so glad we outgrew that phase, but you know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong, on the newer cars, they do the crazy lifts of the giant rims, they look good. Yeah. They look good for that, that's their style, but like on these cars, now it's the custom suspension, tuck the wheel, so many hours of man time and working to this car that it's just insane. That's really neat. And so if someone wants to, you mentioned your Instagram already, if someone wants to follow you, follow this company, like kind of, if they're can, new and want to see more about it, where should they go? You can find me, you can find me at, on Instagram at playboy underscore GZ underscore 3800. You can find Corleone Forged at uh, Corleone Forged on Instagram. You know, and like a lot of other awesome companies that I'm involved with. Uh, you can find Quick Performance on the Quick Performance Instagram, Facebook, the web. QA1 suspension, Haltec, which is the ECUs. They, they're making, Haltec was a primarily race brand. Okay. And with some development and talking with the people, I deal with them a lot. They actually stand behind my race car. We developed a new a new computer system that's gonna come out for the, for the, lower, for the lower end budget wise to do the swaps. A lot of people will put newer motors in these old cars. <laughs> like they'll put motors out of Corvettes, Camaros, LS, fuel injected stuff. You know what I'm saying, Haltec, Haltech's done that. You could check them out for computer stuff. You want to see some cool interior stuff, go uh, look at Original Sound Factory on Instagram. Um, advanced <clears throat> advanced coatings and trim will show you. There's all sides of this to get into. Got it. You can get into it from an employment side as well. You know, okay. You can learn a trade and, and be part of this industry. That's, that's really a big thing that we're trying to encourage now is people to be part of the trade. And if you're part of the trade, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're, it's employment in something you're interested in and it helps grow it. I'm, I'm, I've been here for, I've been in big rim stuff, big rim racing stuff since the start. I just want to see it grow. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Playboy. I'm going to put everything in the description so you can, you can follow him and, and see what projects he's working on if you're interested in big rim vehicles and racing. That to me is very interesting. So. If you're in the Midwest and you want to see something really cool, July 19th and 20th at, at Great Lakes Dragway, in Union Grove, Wisconsin. I hold a show called Shy town Show and Go. This will be my seventh year, and it is an epic, family-friendly event, car show, drag racing, entertainment, good place to be. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate You're it. Welcome. I'm with Rick from Vintage Air. I don't know of any other company that does air conditioning. Like everybody- Nor do you need to, Christina. <laughs> Like everybody that I've talked to, vintage air, vintage air, vintage, vintage air. And the fact that you guys also have a front runner, mm -hmm. the, the serpentine system that goes in front of the engine that I actually really like. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'm not going anywhere else. So I wanted to make sure I caught you guys. I've been looking for your booth at like all the other events to see that you guys were here at SEMA. I was really, really excited. Good. Um, would you mind telling uh, me a little bit like the background about vintage air? Like how did you guys get started? Mm -hmm. Our founder, Jack Chisenhall, um, 
started Vintage Air in 1976, so we've been around 40 something years now, quite a while. And uh, like most of these hot rod industries, you know, or hot rod businesses, he saw a need, he, he was an engineer, he lived in San Antonio, plenty hot. People were driving their hot rods. It is, his interest at the time was hot rods. He was a hot rod builder. So initially he got into kind of putting together systems for old cars, for pre-49 cars, you know. And at the time, if you air conditioned a hot rod, it was basically an underdash, you know, a knee knocker system, something like that. And Jack started thermoforming parts and started designing units specifically for this packaging requirements of an old car. Small, tight, you know, that would fit behind the dash. So that was his initial foray into the market and then as the company grew and the market grew we started doing what we call SureFit kits and the first SureFit kit we designed which is a kit designed specifically for a vehicle was for a 57 Chevrolet so that was back okay. in the mid 80s and now we have over 170 different SureFit kits so that that has grown a whole lot and so that's a big focus on our market now at the time so we've gone everything from 57 Chevrolets up through you know Camaros Mustangs Chevelles, a lot of the Fords, pickups, you know, we can do pickups from the 50s right up through the 80s. Our, our most new systems now that we're introducing here is for the Fox Body Mustang and G Body GMs, you know, the Monte Carlos and Cutlasses and things like that. So, you know, the market continues to grow and, and we're growing with it. Is it just because you guys have been established for so long uh, that that I haven't, like, I li I'm, I'm still pretty new, but like, I don't, eat, I don't know of any other company companies that do it do you guys is it just because you're so established or what is it that you do different that makes you guys better than the other ones well I think you know again we're hot rodders ourselves and we've always prided ourselves on building the best most efficient best performing systems there are available and we've learned a lot through the years our systems have come a long way initially they were vacuum operated and cable operated now they're fully electronic our newest gen 4 system here is fully electronic it's injection molded case. This is a lot like an OEM unit. This is very similar in technology to what we used in the Ford GT. We did the air conditioning for the 04 GT mm -hmm. and for the 16, the 2016 GT. So a lot of that OEM experience we have allows us to translate that technology into our aftermarket systems as well. And you said, so OEM has an option, you're saying, or that? We did the air conditioning for the Ford GT. Oh, okay, so oh, oh, well, I was thinking OEM is just being like, I'm still trying to yeah. remember. Like, yeah, I know the that terminology, it's, it's a right? company that, that sells uh, Yeah, parts. no, no, the OEMs are Ford, GM, things like that. Oh, so, yeah, okay. you know, the Ford GT, we, we manufactured the system for the Ford oh. GT. Okay, so it came with it. Like, right, yeah. right, yeah. It's okay. installed right there at the factory. The customer doesn't do it. That's systems we provide for the factory to install in the vehicles as they build them. That's really cool. So yeah. you're able to sell directly to the consumer as well as to yep. the other companies to make sure that it's yep. all set up. Different parts of our market. Yep, exactly. Would exactly. you mind telling me how it works? Sure. I mean, <laughs> any air conditioner works the same way. I mean, people think it's a black box that just makes cold air. <laughs> An air conditioner is, 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 and we've actually got a nice little animation on our website that you can see kind of that those. But basically, you're taking a system like this and you're bringing the air in from inside a cold, closed area. You run that air across the coil you're running refrigerant through that coil and as you boil the refrigerant it takes the heat out of that air and so the air you feel the cooler air you feel is air with an absence of heat so now you also the lower the temperature of the air it can't hold you moisture anymore that's what goes to the ground so you get nice cold dry air blowing on you so and that's I'm, what you're doing you're you're pulling the air out of the heat out of the air that you've got inside your vehicle I didn't even think about it that way. Like you're not cooling the right. air, you're taking you're the heat out. You're removing the heat up. Yeah, and That's... you're just you're you're circulating a refrigerant through the system. You've got a compressor on the engine, you've got a condenser, which is just a heat exchanger in front of the radiator, and basically you circulate that refrigerant through the system, it changes state twice. Inside your evaporator, the air handler inside the car, that refrigerant evaporates and absorbs heat, and then you pull it out with the compressor push it through the condenser in front of the radiator a second, you've got a second heat exchanger at that point, you dissipate that heat. So what you're doing is you're taking the heat from inside the vehicle and moving it outside the vehicle. That is so cool. And you said, so this is the new one. Mm -hmm. This is our Gen 5 Magnum. This is our most current system. And the difference between the last generation and this one, you said it was because this one's more electronic? No, our last several systems are Gen 4's electronic. We've got some Gen 2 systems that are electronic. A little bit more advanced electronics, OEM controllers. And the biggest difference with the Gen 5 system is the injection molded case. It's not a thermoformed case. It's an injection molded case, again, like most OEMs use. And larger blower, this is a 
larger blower than okay. our last system. So more airflow, more capacity. I'm happy about that. Because yes. Being in Sacramento. Yes. You know, yes. that's cool. And so, we're in San Antonio, so similar similar heat loads. You get a little bit hotter than right. we do. <laughs> right. But thank you so much. Thanks Rick. for Christina. Really we're looking forward to working with you more. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here with Ross with TMI Products. I just met them today. Uh, my friends from Speed Tech introduced us, and what really stuck out for me, I have a back issues, I'm retired due to a back injury, and I will need new seats. The seats that I have now are the original seats, and I know they're not gonna be comfortable enough. I hadn't really done much of the research, but when I came to their booth, I just asked them, do you have anything for people with back issues? And uh, the gentleman showed me that you had options with lumbar support. So yeah. I would love to hear more about like, how did the business start and um, a little bit more about your products and what you have to offer. TMI products started 41 years ago. And what's exciting is that it started as a family business. It's still a family business. This uh, business has uh, um, been handcrafted. This hand craftsmanship is exuded through every product that we have. It's really neat uh, to see you go through our manufacturing and see so many skilled people working on your stuff, and whether it's a seat or a door panel, a dash pad, a headliner. Uh, it's a great craftsmanship that, that you end up seeing in all of our products. I, the attention to detail is looking at the, the lines and I yeah. don't know what anything is called, but sure. like it just, I love the artistic part of it. Sure. I definitely want to do all black just because that was the original color. So what options do you have? Like do you sell custom or do you have specific like options where you can do different colors? Like what, what about that? Sure, so great question and uh, something that we just la launched a couple days ago here at the SEMA show is our new seat configurator. So go to tmiproducts.com and you'll be able to design whether it's a low back seat or one of our pro classic seats and you'll be able to um, go through and design it with whatever color you want that we have. We've got tons of colors, uh, ways, and then we've got uh, over a dozen different uh, insert patterns for you to select from and then start picking out like what do you want? You know, what's your interior uh, you know, going to look like? Well, what we are always looking at um, when we're uh, especially judging the TMI Trim Awards, we're looking at those that are those people that are um, bringing uh, outside elements into the interior and vice versa. So with those colorways that we're all, that we're always uh, um, helping to guide our customers, it's really neat to get some of that um, really cool um, accent colors that you might have from your paint into the interior. Uh, and you're making me think. <laughs> oh, it's really cool. It's really, really cool. So as an example, we have an OBS uh, sitting in front of us, right? And that OBS uh, had some uh, uh, a tan interior uh, originally. So we wanted to stick with that tan interior, but we wanted to also bring some of that outside paint into the interior. So we did that with, uh, with some black suede. That black suede, really cool. And then it, um, it also has our newest um, seat insert design. It's a double diamond with lines, DDL. That double diamond with lines uh, is a really cool pattern that is only achieved through our CNC sewing machines. It's a really neat process to watch something go from a computer and, and, and transform live right in front of you. And with color matching, it's, yes. it's kind of hard to like online versus in person. Sure. How do you navigate that? So if someone's like, okay, I want to look into getting seats from them, but I want it like for me. If I want to get black seats, maybe find some sort of really subtle way to tie sure. in the color, how do I make sure that it's actually gonna match my car? So, yes, yeah, so what we end up doing is uh, uh, reaching out to a customer, um, talking with them and asking uh, <clears throat> what colors are they looking for, and then we get them swatches. So we end up sending them uh, about a half dozen swatches. And so you can uh, figure out what those colorways are and then find the exact thing that you need to put in your, in your vehicle. I love that because yeah. you're making, like, I'm like trying to think of mm, what options do I have? Sure. Uh, so how many options do you have that has the lumbar support? So uh, we're going to end up launching that in all of our, uh, uh, all of our bucket seats. Okay, yeah. perfect. So not available on bench uh, just yet, but it's going to be offered in all of our uh, uh, bucket seats. Yeah, my back seat. Anybody can just deal with that. It's, it's sure. the driver's seat that's important to me. Yeah. I love that. So if anybody is interested in learning more about you, other than the website, how would you suggest people get in touch with you guys? 
uh, to, to learn more. So you can definitely give us a call, but you know, again, you're gonna see so many great products right from our website at chimaiproducts.com. And the, how many events do you guys go to? Because I, I sat in the chair and that's how I was like, oh, I really like this versus seeing it online and being able to sit in it and as you, in your displays that people are able to sit down in, in the seats. Do you do other events so that people can actually like experience Absolutely. that too? So uh, we, we end up doing events coast to coast and we're, we're at some sort of show or, or event every single month. So uh, just uh, go to our site or uh, go to our Facebook or Instagram page and you're going to find out exactly what the next show we're going to be at. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. I really no appreciate problem. you taking the time thank to you, talk me through all this and I can't Absolutely. wait to uh, talk to you about what options we're going to do for mine. Love it. I'm here with Cameron from Speed Tech Performance. I, I am so grateful that we're actually getting to like hang out a couple years ago, I went to Good Guys in Pleasanton to ask about my subframe. When I inherited the Camaro, yeah. I, the subframe was on it. I didn't know what it was, and I was able to connect with one of your guys right. and like learn more, a little bit more about the product. I'm still really new, so would you mind sharing like what is Speed Tech and what do you guys per, uh, sell? Shoot. I mean, the whole concept of our company is to take vintage cars like these and make them run like a modern performance car but not only just performance something that you could hop in in California and you're like hey I want to go to Florida today hop in and go like I've road tripped them ourselves. I've road tripped the 69 Camaro from Utah where we're based up to Pleasanton raced for three days and just drove home all in the same car so not only performance but comfort you know we're taking luxury performance and marrying them to a vintage setup and so we have everything from bolt-on suspension to full chassis so like you've got a 69 Camaro, right? Yes. It's got our torque arm and our bolt-on front suspension. It came as a package, so okay. it was the subframe with the unisteer power steering okay. the yeah, yeah. and the Viking coilovers yeah. with the upper and lower. I'm, I'm still so learning all the words. Our pro touring. That's our pro touring. Okay. So we have different levels. We have bolt-on where you can use a factory subframe, and, and we don't do just Camaros. We offer like over 25 different uh, platforms that we, we offer setups for. But for, for the F-Body specifically, we can do uh, a factory subframe with just bolt-on control arms, Viking performance coilovers, or we have our Pro Touring, kind of our next step up, and that's one you have. Or we have our Extreme, like this one. So right now, we're sitting in the TMI booth with this beautiful car, carbon fiber, crazy car, right, from uh, Finale Speed, and this one's running our Extreme subframe. And with this, you're able to run big, fat, wide tires, 315s in the front, it's got our dual power rack and pinion system, forged aluminum, spindles. I mean, this one's everything you could wish for. How do you determine which package you want to go to? It, I, I didn't even realize which package yeah. I had, so yeah. it, it's kind of cool. So I have the, the like you said, you, the th kind of yeah. three different options for that. Yeah. So you're kind of in the middle ground. You know, it's a great, it's an upgrade from factory. You know, but it's it's something that for you again as a daily driver, it's yeah. amazing, right? Um, so how do we determine it? Our sales team literally just says, hey, what you want to do with your car? You know, are you going to be racing it? Because like as we speak outside, we have eight cars out racing in the Optima Finals. That is cool. And so like eight of 20-ish in our class. So we have almost half of the whole country, you know? And so performance is our game. But we ask, what do you want to do with your build? Are, are you going to just drive it in the street? Are you going to whatever? And we just kind of tune from there, right? Um, I've driven a 67 also that has our, our bolt-on in the front with a torque arm. Drove it from Boise down to St. George in one day and super comfortable. And all it was was bolt-on control arms. But it gives you the reliability and the strength and, and the, the confidence you need to hop in a 50-year-old car and just go. And you would you kind of be able to walk us through like a little bit more details about this specific car and, yeah. and your parts and stuff? For sure. So. We, we've partnered with Finale Speed on a few of their, their builds. So these builds are full carbon fiber, 69 Camaros. I mean, these things, it's crazy, right? And so it's sitting on a LT4, so 650 horsepower. So they wanted something that was gonna handle. These, are, these cars are under 3,000 pounds. So they're like, we need something that's gonna handle with the best performance possible. Gonna be comfortable though, because we're not gonna really race them. And so we're like, yeah, y'all need the, the extreme setup because they want to be able to compete basically against an exotic car with this. That's their goal. And these are turnkey. And so this one's sitting on our extreme. 
And um, again, 315 wide tires in the front with over 30 degrees of steering, where a stock setup you get like 26 degrees of steering roughly. Okay. So you're getting more steering angle and your tires twice as wide. That's really interesting. So the, the setup has to be different in order to get the range of motion yes. for the tire. So we have in-house engineers. The way they've designed the inner, the inner frame rail right in here is it notches in and everything is internally gusseted and strengthened for um, to be able to fit the bigger tire. So you have the more, more room to fit the tire for your steering angle. And then we have, we've partnered with Sweet Manufacturing for our uh, steering rack and it's a dual power rack and pinion setup. Okay. And so it's it's kind of a race bread setup, right? NASCAR, circle track, dirt track, that's kind of their setup. But then it's custom valved for, for what we're doing here. And so, again, these big wide tires, I remember the first time I put my dad in one of our cars, and he's like, those wide tires, that's going to ride like crap on the street. And we hopped in and he was like, that was easy. It was comfortable to drive with that, with that rack and pinion system. It makes it so it's very responsive. And comfortable, and you're going to have a modern feel. And so that's kind of the front setup on this car. You're able to tune all your caster, camber, toe, ride height, all that kind of stuff with most suspensions, right? So then it's got our torque arm in the rear on this car. And the torque arm, it's not our concept, but it's our design. So we, again, our engineers went to work and they wanted something that was strong. So it's made of Strinex, which is a lightweight, high strength blend of steel. And so that way we're able to, um, again, cut down weight and things, because cars like these, they always want them, you know, the, the least amount of weight possible. And um, it's a full floating rear end setup. It, there's a cross member in the middle of the car that the torque arm sits into. And then our articulating arms are placed where the leaf springs would be in the back. And so the arms go from the axle housing to the front leaf spring pockets, and then it, it rotates, it swivels articulates within itself and so then you've got a full uh, coil over conversion rear end on this. So a torque arm, mm -hmm. I am new, what exactly is a torque arm? So it's, <laughs> it's literally an arm that goes from the bottom of your third member on your axle, okay. it mounts here and it comes all the way to the center of the car. So it's literally a big, underneath this car there's a big arm that goes from underneath the axle to the middle of the car. So now the purpose of that, like when you're hitting the, the accelerator, right? Normally, you dump your, your rear end and, and you're driving like this, right, under okay. high power. The way that this does it, it's designed so now your center, your force is in the center of the car, so it rises, the whole car rises. Not all cars have that, no. though. This is something additional specifically yes. for that. Because the drive shaft is the other piece that I was thinking mm -hmm. of. It, so so that's this sits not under the, the drive shaft. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. That's yep. really cool. Yeah, and then like when you're braking and you hit a hard brake, normally you nose dive, right? The way this is designed is now because everything's in the center, it sucks the whole car down. Oh. So it's way more efficient. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. Like I really, I really want to like look. I, it's hard to, you know, For to be sure. able to see all that on For this sure. car, but it'd be really neat to actually see how that all works. My yeah. brain is like trying to picture yeah. it. So basically, what this does is it replaces those leaves, right, oh. with that articulating arm, and so then you get the coil over, so it's more comfortable and you have more tuning ability. So just like in the front, you've got your, your shock with the coil around it. Mm -hmm. You're able to tune your, your rebound and your compression. And so depending on your driving style, you're able to do whatever you want to do with it. You have a lot more control mm -hmm. and, and as you said, you can tune it. That's yeah, really it's cool. And it's comfortable, right? Like people hop in these cars and they expect to be rough. And, and with the leaf springs, a lot of time you get that floaty feel. Okay. Gone, completely gone. And so it's going to be like super tight. When you come to our shop here in what is a few months, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to take you for some rides. In, in some oh of our my gosh, cars. I'm really That'll excited. Be fun. That'll be I, really fun. Like a kid, I'm like, ah. Yeah. No, it's the best. I mean, that's the best thing is like working with cars and doing what we do. Like, it's like playing with toys all day. Yeah. You know. And so, we're we're super pumped to to continue because I know, like as you've said, you're on your education journey, right? We've got a team. We we don't just talk the talk. We walk the walk. Like Tom, you know Tom. Yeah. He's got a huge background of, of racing. He worked with Bentley and Porsche and all these things, right? I mean, we have drag racers on our team. We've had drifters that work for us. Guys that currently work for us race all the time. Like, and so we're able to actually show you what these cars do and teach you, you know, not just say, hey, you know, talk to so-and-so, you know, we can actually all talk about it. 
And I'm really excited that we can actually share this journey with everybody else. So it's not just me. Right. We're going to be able to take everybody else along with me. Absolutely. So that if they're curious to learn about it, that they, yeah. they can kind of get a little insight. Yeah. Speaking of, how would somebody, like, where should they look to see more about you guys? Like, For sure. So, so we've got Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. If you just search Speed Tech Performance, um, there's a few other Speed Tech Performance brands. And so uh, look for the, the Speed Tech Performance right here, right? Um, and, and we post there multiple times a day. Um, Tom does a great job on YouTube posting a lot of how-to videos. He actually just did a whole, about a half hour video on how to install the torque arm, a step-by-step -step instruction, right? And so it's something, a setup like that, it's easy to install. We have all the videos you need um, and a lot of cool content because we have like 30-ish cars that we sponsor all around the country that race every weekend. And so you'll see race cars, you'll see show cars. You know, I mean, we've got here at SEMA, we've got eight cars outside and another six or eight cars inside, just like this one here with Finale Speed. Um, yeah, so I mean, the sky's the limit. The, the more you learn, again, the sky's the limit. I'm really excited. And I'll make sure to put all that information in the description so they make sure that they're going to the right place. So like I said, we have eight cars outside. I think it'd be really cool if you actually go see some of these cars like in in action. You want to go out there? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I, well, why would I say no to that? Right. That'd be awesome. Perfect. Let's go check it out. Finally found Cameron and Tom. I got lost and ended up missing them actually doing the races. But uh, Cameron's going to come through and kind of tell me a little bit about the differences since they have how many cars out here right now? So we've got seven cars and one truck. So eight. Eight total. And the cool thing with it is all of them have different suspension packages that we offer. So it just kind of goes to show whether it's like a bolt-on. It's like this car. It's got our bolt-on kit. It's a stock chassis. We also make a frame brace kit for these Chevelles because they have a C-channel frame that runs from the front to the back and they're super twisty. And so we made a kit that actually boxes that in and you don't have to worry about the, the torsional twist on it anymore. It's so crazy. Like I, I'm like a visual person, so it's kind of hard to, to yeah. imagine what it looks like. So basically Tom and I, we did a science experiment once on one of these chassis as, as it was stock. And we, we put about 150 pounds on one corner of it and the whole frame twisted about like an inch and a half. Just That's from crazy. 150 pounds. So imagine like this car right here, he's got like 700 horsepower. So imagine the torque twist, you get there, that frame just twists, which twists your body, which ruins everything. So so that's this one. This one is another speed tech car. It's a third gen Camaro, 1987. It's got a naturally aspirated 725 horsepower engine and it's running our extreme front. So all the same of the car we looked at inside for the front, and then our independent rear, so our IRS. So with that, as you look at it, as you look in the window of this car, you can see the oh. coilovers are actually in the trunk. That is crazy. I like that you can actually see it. That's yeah. really cool. So most cars have like the straight axle in the rear. Uh-huh. That's where, what I have. Yeah. And so something happens on this side, this side's going to react. Well, when you have your IRS, something happens on this side, it's the only one that reacts. This side's completely independent. So that's why it's good for something like this because it's taking really tight turns, going fast. Yeah. That way you're not like lifting up exactly. off the... And when you're on the street, just driving, is super comfortable. All your modern cars have setups like that. Oh, you just don't see them. Right. Cool. So there's a couple. This way. So we've got Rick's 71, I believe, 71, second gen. So he's running our extreme setup with the torque arm for our first gen, or excuse me, a second gen Camaro. And basically like kind of the same setup of the car we looked at inside, the finale okay. speed. So. Now they're doing the same thing mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. Why are they set up differently? Is it just, to, Preference or? Preference, budget. I mean, there, there's lots of different things because a product like an independent rear is a premium product. It's about, like for our stuff, it's quite a bit more money than a torque arm, you know, but our torque arm is still a fantastic option, you know, and in that one, you have to cut up a lot more of your car where the torque arm is not invasive. 
you don't have to cut, you don't have to, you know, your floors stay the same and everything. So, Got it. Yep. And our IRS is somewhat of a new product. So some cars like these that were built five, six years ago, whatever it might have been, the IRS wasn't even invented yet. Our, our IRS. Oh, got it. So we've got this CUDA. So for any of your Mopar fans, this is a true AAR CUDA, which was a super rare option. And this car is a very like sought after car as it was. And then we cut it up. <laughs> so it's also running our IRS. So he's got it hidden. That whole panel will fold down. So for this is what I call a Mopar e-body. So like a Plymouth Cuda or a Dodge Challenger, that's what this platform is. So it's got the extreme front for the Mopar and then the independent rear. And the extreme front again was what specifically? So that's our full front subframe. And then what we call our proprietary geometry design is extreme okay. because if you look at this, look at the size of tires you're able to fit. So those are like 315 wide tires. That's like that much tire on each side. Uh -huh. And nobody else can do that. That's something we've designed. So this next car is Frankie's car, Frankie uh, Trutanic. It's a, what they call a G-body Buick. He's taken our Camaro front end and rear end, our torque arm, basically grafted it into this car. This car was originally built to be like a drag race car, things like that. But he's pushing like 11, 1200 horsepower with this car. So it's super powerful, full purpose built, race car, carbon fiber, and is a G body, you know, so you have like, this is a Regal, you have your Grand Nationals, your T-types, all that kind of stuff. And nobody makes products like this for a Regal, so we actually used the Camaro front and rear. We do offer bolt-on parts for these, but it's just bolt-on. And Frankie needed more than bolt-on. So. And carbon fiber is just like a lighter material? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a lightweight fiber. So instead of just like metal that's like a flat panel, uh -huh. carbon fiber is like woven together. And then you use some resin on it, and the resin hardens it. So you're able to run a lot lighter weight. And it's super strong. Super strong. And it was funny, horsepower is like literally, like it's not what, what they think how much pull one horse would have, right? That's what it is? Essentially. I don't remember the exact calculation. Some people say like, oh, it's one horse. Some people say it was five horses. How fast a horse could pull something in like 50 feet, whatever. That's how they calculate horsepower. And I guess for me, it's hard to tell like, what is a lot of horsepower? Like one goes, oh, it's like, is so, that a lot, a lot of horsepower? A lot? Okay, so like your average, so uh, think of like a modern Camaro. SS, they're about 420 horsepower. So they're a super fast car, 420 horsepower. And this one has like 1200. So that's a lot. So it's got like three times the amount of power as a modern Camaro. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> and then over here, we've got this car is actually just running our rear end. So it's got our torque arm in the rear, and it's got a different setup in the front right now. Are they, are they looking maybe, are they looking maybe to uh, yeah. make some changes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's, this is his first year actually running our torque car. Okay. And so in this car, he's fast. He's really fast. He just put like the BMW, uh, what they call sequential transmission, what where you can that? do a no lift shift. It's like when you have a manual transmission, right? You're off the gas, you put the clutch in and then you shift and you re-engage your your accelerator, right? Yeah. With a no lift shift, keep your foot in the gas and all you do is pop it and it shifts for you. Okay. It's really cool. And huh. I think he has paddle shifter sh set up too. Huh. So, so it saves you time because what, every time you let off the throttle to shift, you lose just a little bit of like inertia. Okay. And so this way you just keep the gas in it and just pop, pop, pop and you're in control of it. Huh. Yeah. It's pretty cool. He's fast. And then our last car, before we get to the truck, is this. It's called Angry Smurf. <laughs> and so this car is running what we call our Extreme Excess in the front. So Excess is it's got our same extreme geometry that we've talked about. Excess is it's made out of a Strinex metal. So it's a lighter weight blend of metal, but stronger. So this is about 
20-ish percent lighter than our other product. And in the race world, lighter is faster. Everyone likes to be lighter, right? So same kind of concept. And then same thing, it's got our independent rear. So if you look oh, through you that glass back there, there. That's cool. It's beautiful. And then same thing, he has a sequential transmission. So you just pull that back to go back, you know, to shift up or pop it forward to yeah. shift down. You don't That's ever have so to let off the throttle. That's so cool. I like that you can see everything. And it's the display glass on purpose so yeah. people can see it. So part of the Optima series that we're at here is they have something called D&E, uh -huh. which is design and engineering. Okay. So all these cars that we're looking at are also not judged on how fast they drive, but how good they look. Uh and the different things that you've like thrown into it you know and so for like design and engineering something like that does really well because it's just freaking cool you know yeah, it looks so good neat. so so that's the angry smurf and then the next one is a truck and it's way over there so we're gonna walk all right so we looked at a lot of camaros and the chevelle and things like that we also offer full chassis for c10s or a blazer that's and cool. so this one is a 69 Blazer and it's a full chassis. So it has the same geometry essentially as what's under a Camaro. So this thing will compete with things like a modern sports car and it's a 5,000 pound Blazer. You know, it's, a, it's a meant to be an off-road vehicle and it's got our torque arm and this one. And, and again, cool. it's a full chassis front to back, bumper to bumper under here. That's a cool looking vehicle. I don't yeah. know if I've seen one that looks no, like this. No, I don't. This one, they did such a great job on the interior of this car, or this truck. Wow. To think that, I mean, this is, a, this is a race car. He's got a full back seat, a full stereo system, everything in here. Wow. And Hondo's one of the best people you'll ever meet, too. That's so, so cool. Yeah. So. That's kind of a little bit about what we have here going on, you know, on the outside of SEMA. Inside SEMA, all the beautiful things, now you have things like this that, fantastic, like it could be in there and people could be looking at it because it looks so good, but it's out here tearing up the track. So we can do both, front to back, beauty or the beast, you know? I like the functionality, that's yeah. really cool. Like the, yeah. the, the purpose of what it's actually used for is what interests me. Like car shows are cool, right. but I'm like, well, what does it do? Right, <laughs> right, and that's the thing, once you go to events like this, a static car show, or they get kind of boring after a little while. But, <laughs> you get used yeah. to that. You're like, mm. yeah, yeah. So, so, awesome. so cool. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in a few months. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Anytime. Well, that wraps up SEMA 2023. My first time here. I'm putting it out in the universe now that I want to be here at least next year. Like I'm gonna set it as as a goal because this was an amazing way for me to meet people, build relationships, and I know there's a lot, a lot of opportunity that is gonna come from this, not only for me, but I feel like the content that I'm creating along with the help of all of these different people is going to be helpful for other people. My goal is to help other people that are similar to me that don't know much or don't know anything that might be interested in learning about cars, might want to be interested in getting into it. I want to help build that bridge so that we can all learn together and yeah, I'm really excited. Thank you so much for all of you guys joining me. I'm heading back all home. Next week, I'm gonna be sharing the video from Riley's Rebuilds. And after that, I have some other things planned. I will be traveling to Texas to meet Vintage Air, to St. George to meet Speed Tech, to uh, North Carolina to meet with Richmond Transmission. And also in December, I'm gonna be going to Southern California to meet with Willwood. There's so much opportunity and all these people really want to help teach. They want to help other people who are interested in cars and interested how these things work. That's why they're helping me. They're, they're teaching me and I really hope you guys are excited because I sure am. There's a lot coming down, down, come down the pipe, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys later.